Storm Surge is a devastating killer that can destroy coastal homes, travel miles inland, and find its way to your house with terrifying consequences. This is why you evacuate. Water invades your home, and within minutes you're trapped. A few inches can knock out the power. Furniture floats as the water rises, and by three feet, you better get your family to that second floor or even the attic and make sure you have a way to get out in case you're trapped there. You also don't know when the water's gonna stop rising. By six feet, this is truly life-threatening. This water's above my head and destroying all of these belongings. There are sharp objects, broken glass, and hazardous chemicals all around. And a storm surge of nine feet, well, that is at the ceilings of most homes. Don't get caught in this horrible and deadly nightmare. I urge you to listen to local officials and evacuate when you're ordered to do so. So again, guys, I am back with another video. Um, I want to get into all the other things going on politically and with Diddy and several other breaking news stories, but as you guys know, I um, evacuated my home there in um, the Tampa Bay area in Florida. And specifically, I am on the coast. Um, and so Pinellas County, which is going to, which is the actual coast, I am less than 10 minutes away from the beach. Um, that was one of the reasons why I moved to the area that I did because I love the beach. It's just a great lifestyle for a family um, and just a great area, honestly, to live. But um, yeah, and I just moved there and I thought it would be safe from hurricanes because as you know, Hurricane Milton is, this is historic. Uh, this is the first time in over a hundred years that a hurricane has hit Tampa Bay directly and it hasn't been one this bad since the 1800s. As I did showed you in my last video, I, I knew to evacuate early because I started listening to YouTubers who we all know independent sources are always going to be more knowledgeable in my opinion. They've been doing deep, deep dives into what's going on with historic numbers, what could possibly happen, all these different things. So I knew early on, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to take that risk. I'm going to get out of here. And I am in the area that will have over what is predicted to be over 15 feet of storm surge. That video from the weather channel in the beginning that just went up to nine feet. Okay. So yeah, that is, um, and outside of that, it, the storm surge, there's also going to be rain, um, uh, historic rainfall that also will cause flooding. And yeah, there's now tornadoes all over Florida that have come in from this. So there's that damage. So <laughs> dealing with that and there's just layer upon layer of shite that is being piled on top of this. I frankly don't know if I'm going to have a home to go back to. I flew out, uh, like I said, I, I, I'll just give you briefly, then I want to play what they're actually saying for the county, the last warning for people and how bad it's going to be. But I was able to get a flight out of Orlando in the middle of the night. I had to drive to Orlando for hours and then was able to take a very early flight, layovers and all types of things. Again, very expensive flight. A lot of people do not have the resources to do what I was able to do to get to safety. Um, but I, I flew out because it, it's not just, you know, damage that's going to be done to the home, but the infrastructure, the entire city, the entire town, like I power is supposed to be out for weeks, the damage that is going to be done, like businesses destroy, of course, homes destroy cars. Like I, it is, it is going to be catastrophic for the area and something we haven't really seen in Florida in really ever have we ever seen or witnessed this especially um in the direction that it's coming it is just unprecedented unprecedented so i wanted to be where family was and to be able to um because again even once the storm passes the once the hurricane passes i don't know what's going to be left in 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 how to even function in the area because of all the things that will be wiped out, all the services that will be gone. It's just layer upon layer. But take a listen to this. Um, 
as you guys know, um, I, I set up, I, I told you last time I have set up a little studio in my hotel room that I, I, I just bought it. I mean, I didn't buy, I, I got a hotel room just so I can do, um, uh, you know, so I can actually film and, and have a stu makeshift studio, but we are staying with family. My entire family is from the DC area. So I'm very fortunate to be able to get out and in a privileged position that, um, I have the finances to do so. But again, I don't know if I'll have a home after this. So yay for me. Um, let's play this. Um, so you can get an idea of the details of what's going on directly where I live, which is where the eye of the storm will be. Good morning. This is it, folks. Hurricane Milton is now expected to make landfall near the mouth of Tampa Bay as a Category 4 hurricane. I'm going to describe a very grim forecast for our area, and I'm not saying this to scare you. I want you to be prepared. There is still plenty of space at our public shelters, and we're opening three more this morning. Palm Harbor Middle School in North County, New Heights Elementary School, and Fairmount Park Elementary School, both in St. Petersburg. We have about 8,000 people currently in shelter, and we have capacity for up to 20,000. So please, I implore you, if you live in zones A, B, or C, or in a mobile home, and you don't have friends or family, you don't have any other place to go. These shelters are free. They're pet friendly. You can bring your pets with you. We also have the special needs shelters. So please, if you need those shelters, get to one of them before noon today. We expect the tropical storm force winds to start mid afternoon and it'll keep picking up hour after hour. If you're not out by then, you will be on your own. You'll start to see major bridges closing. Some of you driving on I-275 today saw the alert sign saying the Howard Franklin and the Skyway Bridge will close this afternoon. So we just checked with the Florida Department of Transportation. Right now, the roads leading out of Pinellas and even into Hillsborough are open. So for those of you that still want to get out of county, you have that option, but that window is closing. I cannot stress enough to you that your options are quickly diminishing for what you can do to get out of harm's way. By dusk, you can expect that all the bridges off the peninsula will be closed due to dangerous winds and starting to see really choppy conditions and storm surge. The brunt of this storm is gonna come overnight. And it's going to be scary, right? It's going to be loud when it comes over us. It's going to be very windy. So I need everybody to be thinking about if where you are outside of the evacuation zone, the place that you're staying in your home. Think about having a safe space within your home, an interior room, an interior closet where you can go if things start to get really, really bad. So what else can you expect with a Category 4 at landfall? You heard me talk about yesterday, the last storm that hit us was over 100 years ago, and we were a lot less populated, had a lot less infrastructure than we do now. It was likely a Category 3, so I don't think any of us here in Pinellas County truly know what a Category 4 has in store for us. We can expect 130 mile per hour winds or stronger. We can also expect that wall of storm surge to come up the bay and across our coast. The wall of water could be anywhere from 9 to 13 feet on our beaches and up to 15 feet in our bayfront areas. And that's just zone A. So for those of you that were punched by Hurricane Helene, this is going to be a knockout. At that level, you're not just talking about the threat of drowning. We're talking about buildings, homes, being wiped off of their foundations. That is unsurvivable. So I'm, ta I'm begging you, if, especially if you are in an A zone, you need to get out and you need to get out now. You'll start to see the water increasingly rise as the hours go by, sometimes as much as a foot an hour, maybe even faster. 
and then we'll start to see water getting pushed into our B and our C zones. And for many of those folks, they've never experienced that. We haven't had that here. Please, I don't want you to find out what it feels like to be stuck in your home in the dark and have water rushing in. Knowing that you may not even be able to get a dial tone on your phone, you may not even be able to call 911, and even if you get 911, they may not even be able to send someone out to you. You will truly be on your own, and I cannot think of a more terrifying situation to be in than to be in the dark in a house with water rapidly rising and the winds whipping around. For those of you that are further inland, and we are expecting some very heavy rainfalls in our area, I would say if water starts to enter your home, if possible, turn off the breakers to reduce the chances of fire within your structure. If you're in a mobile home, the level of sustained winds that we are let me just say this, um, in Florida and particularly um, Pinellas County, like just the coast of Florida, there's a lot of senior mobile home communities. These are places where seniors are able to afford to live. Um, many, you know, have moved from different parts of the country or, you know, this is this is where they've retired and the most affordable housing that they can get are mobile homes. So we are seeing that the majority of um, of the senior communities that are like that, they don't have anywhere to go. Of course, there are shelters that are all around, but again, they're not going to have, they're going to be displaced. Our, our most vulnerable in society are going to be displaced after this um, because there's most of these homes will not be able to withstand um, anything that's coming, whether it's the flooding, the the wind, the debris, just the, the the surge, which is, I think, the most dangerous part. Um, they are they are out of luck, and we know they live usually on fixed income. A lot of seniors are having to work, um, go back to work, just because you know they don't have the resources to to do otherwise. And we know we are living in one of the worst economic times of our lives. People can barely afford groceries. People who depend on work, getting a paycheck, they're not able to work because of this. So, and the businesses aren't going to keep paying their employees, you know, during this time because they themselves are experiencing, you know, they're not able to afford to pay people. So we're, we're talking about guys, there, this is a multi-leveled disaster economically, emotionally, you know, we already know the physical toll that it's going to take on the area, but I just wanted to point that out because, um, it's, it's really sad what most likely will happen. Going to see here overnight, we'll send a field of flying debris through the air. We can see trees crashing down into your mobile homes. We've seen many situations with lesser winds where the carports have been pulled off of the mobile home and then it peels off the roof of the rest of the mobile home. That is not where you want to be for this storm. We have heard that most of our mobile home parks have evacuated, but if you're stubbornly hanging out thinking it's not going to be that bad, I survived the last one, I'm going to be fine in this one, my message to you is that you are not safe and you need to get out now. So let's talk about the rain. So for those of you that were in our inland areas and experienced Debbie, we had some very heavy rains up to about 16 inches in some areas of our county, and we had severe flooding. Many of us in, in the southern portion of the county on early September, we had a fluke rainfall in the middle of the afternoon that caused extensive flooding in roadways and I'm telling you, what we're expecting with this storm is going to be much worse than both of those. Again, that was a slap. This is going to be a punch to the face. With 5 to 12 inches of rain expected and isolated amounts up to 18 inches, our very vulnerable low-lying areas will flood and roads will become impassable. Not only for you, but also for all first responders. There will come a point when first responders get pulled off of the road, whether it's for flooding, for storm surge, or winds. If you decide not to leave now, you're going to be stuck at home or what's left of your home for days. 
The storm surge will push up creeks and into lakes, which then will not allow the rainfall to drain off. So this will cause flooding to communities around our water bodies, including those adjacent to Lake Tarpon and Lake Seminole. No matter where you are, even if you're in a sturdy building outside the evacuation zone, you will experience the power of this storm. I would encourage you, you have some time this morning, so if, if you think you're gonna flood at all, if you can, move your vehicle to higher ground. And I cannot say enough about the electric vehicles, anything with those lithium ion batteries needs to be moved out of the surge zones where it could be exposed to salt water. We've seen it, they've exploded, they've caused fires. If it's inside of your home or underneath a condo, uh, we, we do not need to have building fires in the middle of this because nobody's going to be able to come out and help you. That was the other thing. Um, I do have an electric vehicle. I have a Tesla. And so I know of several people from just Helene, which did not really hit Florida as impactfully as it did, you know, in other parts of the country who had catastrophic damage from Helene and many um, electric vehicles set on fire. Either they were become inoperable but a lot of them also caused house fires on top of the flood damage so thankfully my my car um i was able to park it at the garage at the airport um, on a higher floor in like in the middle of it so hopefully that park i i believe it will be safe but i don't know if it could get a lot of of uh, the salt water hitting it and so again i don't know if i'll be homeless or have a um vehicle after this so yeah and if you guys see like the light changing on my face i'm just trying to stay up to date as this is playing i'm listening and watch this and i'm also just trying to find more information because more things are coming out again this is approaching this is we are countdown to this thing making landfall i will be live streaming tonight um, as this thing comes in, checking out cameras, different um, storm chasers, who guys who are actually run to these storms and they actually get in the middle of it and film it and just seeing what's going on. There's also a lot of traffic cameras and other cameras set up throughout um, the counties that you can take a look at and see, you know, if they're still operable, if um, what is actually happening on the ground. And also I will be checking out locally near my house what is happening. I'll end this here. Um, it goes on to continue to talk about just, you know, how they, you're not going to have help right now that these shelters are going to be packed and this is not going to be a fun situation. We don't know. They don't know what is going to be left after this hurricane, as I've been telling you guys. So again, prayers for everyone still in the area. Um, and just, just pray that this, um, that people make it out, obviously, coming out there alive is the main goal but a lot of people's lives are going to be ruined financially um because of this and the government really doesn't have an answer or a way to really help people this is just this is just terrible so with that guys leave a comment let me know if you're in the area i've been reading you guys comments and seeing that a lot of you guys are in the area are from florida um and particularly in the tampa bay or the surrounding counties so let me know how you guys are shaking out um and yeah i will see you guys on the next one bye